Hello and welcome to the second little video in the series of Ask 3D Fluffy question. Something I was asked in the past is how to make an object bob or float on water. And it would take quite long to actually hand animate that. So I found two ways to automate it. One with Expresso and the other one with the cloner object. And the cloner is actually a new addition to the most basic cinema package, the prime package. So I'm going to start with an empty project. And first of all, I'll show you how to make the animated water surface. So step one, add a plane. And step two, add a displacer deformer. This is also new in Cinema 4D Prime, by the way, this displacer. Now drag the displacer inside the plane. And under shading in the attribute manager, if you have the displacer selected, you can load a shader. Just the standard noise shader will do. Now press play and you'll see that it's not animated yet. We're going to change that in a bit. But first go to the object page and increase the strength a bit. Let's in fact set this to um, 350%. This doesn't look like water yet. Quite rough actually. So let's add a hyperNURBS and drag the plane into the hyperNURBS. Okay, let's select the displacer again and go back to the shading page. Click the noise shader. I'm going to drag this up a little so we can see more of the options. Now change the global scale of the shader to 500%. And the scale on the x-axis, this first uh, of these three input fields, change this. Actually change this to 500 as well. And you can use the animation speed parameter to have this animated. So this gives it a bit of a random uh, wobbly movement. But it's not moving in one particular direction. For that you have the uh, movement options down here. Set this to 1. And if you then also increase the speed to maybe 1%. Now we have a nice wavy type movement. I'm going to increase the animation range to 300. Now we need an object that we can attach to the surface. Let's just use a simple sphere. Let's make this uh, 25 centimeters. Now right click the sphere and add a Expresso tag. This is the Expresso editor. Now drag the sphere and the plane into this Expresso window. Let's make these two nodes a bit bigger. So this is a bit of an uh, Expresso introduction for you if you've never worked with it. Right click into an empty area in this Expresso window and choose new node, Expresso, general, point. And have this positioned in between these other two nodes. The plane needs to be on the left and the sphere on the right. Now these blue little corners are the inputs and the red ones are the outputs. And what we need is a new output port for the plane. And what we would like to output is simply the object name. And as you can see, the point node also has an object input. This is basically how you can link the plane to this new point node. And you'll see that it just turned yellow. That's because this point node actually needs a polygon or point object as an input. Select the plane and convert it to a polygon object with this button. So now we've got the actual points on this plane. And the node is no longer yellow. Now next we need a new input port on the sphere. So click this blue corner. And go to coordinates, position. And just position. 
and link the point position from the point node to the position input of the sphere. So what this basically does is position the sphere on one of the points on the plane. Well, you can see that the sphere is now positioned on point number 0 on the plane, which is defined here using the point index. If I change this number, I can attach the sphere to a different point on the plane. So you can see that if you don't connect anything to an input port, like the point index, you can change that value directly in the attribute manager if you have the point node selected, that is. So using the point index input, you can tell which point the sphere should be attached to. But uh, it's not really bobbing on the water yet, which was our main intent. So make sure you've got the point nodes that are selected and turn on deformed points. And now we have exactly what we wanted. The point index controls where exactly the sphere sits on the surface. So this is the expresso method. Now I'm going to explain the other methods. Let's select this expresso tag and press delete to get rid of it. And let's add a cloner object. And drop the sphere into the cloner. Let's select the cloner and on the object page change the mode to object. And now all we have to do is drag the plane into the object input field. And voila, we have a lot of spheres attached to the plane. One sphere for every point on the plane. But that's not what we're after. Here under distribution, change this to surface. Now we've just got some random spheres on the surface. Let's change the count to 50. And this seat here controls how these are placed randomly because it's not totally random. If you don't like a particular placement, just try a different seat. And I'm going to make the sphere smaller. And I'm actually going to increase the count to 500. Now it's lots of little objects floating on the surface. And if you're working with lots of clones, especially if they are more complex than these spheres, you should switch on render instances. Because then they don't take up extra memory. So this is basically the other method. And this is how far you can get in Prime. But there's actually more you can do if you have the full Morgraph uh, features. So if you have the broadcast or the studio package. You could, for example, add a delay effector. So make sure the cloner is there selected and add a delay effector. And you can see this effector linked to the cloner here on effectors. And select the delay effector. And change the mode to spring. Because I'd like to add a bit of bounciness to this uh, movement. But you do have to increase the strength quite a bit. At 90 you start to really notice it. Especially if I look from the side. You can turn this up even more. To 95. Or even 98. Now it starts to look really interesting. Really overshooting. And I'd like to show you something cool that you can do if you animate this parameter. So let's go to the start of the animation and set this to zero. Set a keyframe. And go to frame 100. And change the strength to 100%. Now go a little bit further to uh, frame 140 and 
keep this at 100%, so set another keyframe. And now at frame um, 250, change the strength back to zero with another keyframe. And let's see what this looks like. We. So that's a bit of an unexpected and interesting effect. Kind of a slow motion effect. You can also intensify this a bit if you change the height on the display so to, uh, let's say, 25. So that's something you can do with a delay effector. And that's it for today. You can check out more 3D Fluff tutorial downloads and DVDs at 3dfluff.com. And if you have suggestions for future mini tutorials, you can email us at ask at 3dfluff.com. So until next time, bye bye.